Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class. In this lecture, I want to answer a question I've been getting a lot recently. It's often the case that students hear about some advanced high-level concept and they think that it's really cool. And that's what makes them interested in machine learning. And that totally makes sense. We want to answer questions like, how can I build a self-driving car? Not, how can I apply multivariable calculus to neural networks? One of these sounds really cool, the other sounds really geeky. Of course, at the same time, these things really do involve multivariable calculus, so you can't get scared when you start seeing these equations. You just have to remember that they're part of the industry that you're in. So the question I want to answer is, how do I learn about these advanced computer vision topics? What is the path I should take if I'm a beginner and I know nothing? In other words, how can I go from zero to hero in computer vision? What are the advanced interesting topics in computer vision and how can I actually get to a point where I understand them? That's what I'm going to answer in this lecture. By the way, I'm going to be doing other videos like this for other topics in the future, so if you have any requests, please let me know. In future videos, I'm going to cover topics such as natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and Bayesian machine learning. As a small note, if you want to read this guide rather than watch this video, just click on the link in the description below. Now, this lecture might remind you a lot of another lecture I made called, What Order Should I Take Your Courses In? But whereas that lecture featured my courses, this lecture is just going to focus on topics relevant to computer vision. In fact, this lecture isn't really about my courses at all. It's just a lecture about different subjects and how they relate to one another. As I always tell my students, I don't care where you learn these topics from. Just make sure you follow the order I've laid out if you want to avoid getting frustrated or stuck, so order is very important. You don't want to try to learn something advanced before you learn something simple. In fact, a lot of the time, the advanced things are actually really easy to understand. They only seem hard because you didn't follow the right steps. In reality, it's really the first few steps that are very hard because they cover the fundamentals. But once you get through the pain of making sure your fundamentals are solid, Building on top of that is very easy. And yes, sometimes it is painful. Imagine if someone told you that if you wanted to be a data scientist, you'd have to spend hours memorizing the multiplication table. For anyone watching this lecture, that was probably decades ago. But just think about how mundane a task that was. And that's what it took. It took you hours of memorizing a table of numbers to get you where you are now. So let's talk about computer vision. What are some advanced topics in computer vision that beginners often want to learn about? The first is object detection. As you can imagine, object detection is very useful for applications like self-driving cars. If a car is going to be driving on the road autonomously, it has to be able to identify other vehicles, traffic lights, pedestrians, bicycles, and even just basic things like lane markings. Of course, the concept of self-driving doesn't apply only to cars. They apply to trucks, to drones, to military robots, even to vacuum cleaners and surveillance systems. Another huge application is farming. Simply put, robots can work faster than humans, if they can actually do the job that humans are currently doing, such as, say, picking fruit. Best of all, robots don't get tired. Speaking of surveillance systems, another major application of computer vision is facial recognition. Today, facial recognition helps you unlock your phone. In the corporate world, that's the kind of technology that might be used to let you gain entry into your office building. At the same time, facial recognition technology is imperfect. It has faced backlash due to the potential invasion of privacy. Cameras everywhere means that the government potentially knows exactly where you are and what you are doing 24 hours of every day. Can a society with total surveillance be considered a free society?
Another interesting application of computer vision is the generation of images. The first area I think is interesting is called style transfer. This is where you can take a piece of art, like Starry Night by Van Gogh, and combine it with another image, say the Golden Gate Bridge. What we're doing here is taking the structure of the Golden Gate Bridge, but combining it with the style of Starry Night. We can apply different art styles by using different paintings, but as you can see, these are all still recognizable as the Golden Gate Bridge. The final application I want to talk about is the GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network. The GAN is also used to generate images, and it too can be used to generate art. In the past, GANs have been used to perform tasks like image colorization and inventing new anime characters. Here are some examples. What makes GANs so amazing is that they are capable of creating very high quality images. Here are some images from the paper titled Progressive Growing of GANs. All right, so that's all very impressive, but you can be pretty sure that it's very advanced. But what's amazing is that at the heart of all these technologies is the same type of neural network, the convolutional neural network or CNN. Essentially, all of the technologies I mentioned previously are just little variations on the basic CNN. And like all neural networks, in the end, all they're doing is classification and regression. All of these technologies I mentioned previously are doing classification and regression in some form. Okay, so in order to learn about any of these advanced applications of computer vision, you're going to first need to know about CNNs. So what is a CNN? Well, a CNN combines two things. As you can probably tell by its name, a convolutional neural network is a neural network that has convolution. Essentially, you'll need to learn about what convolution is, how to combine it with neural networks, and then how to implement that in code to actually build a convolutional neural network. Of course, this necessitates knowing how to build a neural network in the first place. So before you learn how to build a CNN, you'll want to figure out how to build a basic ANN, which stands for Artificial Neural Network. ANNs are just very basic flat neural networks that don't specialize on images. They can work on any data. But the caveat is, while both ANNs and CNNs work on images, since CNNs are specialized to work with images, CNNs perform better than plain ANNs on this type of data. The key technology behind building neural networks today is modern deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, Theano, and PyTorch. These technologies allow us to run our neural networks on the GPU, which does calculations orders of magnitude faster than on regular CPUs. So for example, if training a neural network takes 24 hours on your laptop, it might take only 20 minutes on a GPU. These days, modern neural networks might still take weeks to train on a GPU, meaning that training that same neural network on a CPU would be completely infeasible. Another big advantage of modern frameworks such as TensorFlow is that they have a feature called automatic differentiation. In short, this lets us train our neural networks automatically without worrying about how the neural network has to be trained. In essence, we just call a function and wait for it to finish. From the perspective of a TensorFlow user, that's all you have to worry about in order to train your neural network. But what is automatic differentiation and why do we need it? Well, this is where all that scary math comes into play. Remember, I told you that the advanced topics are actually quite simple. It's these fundamentals that cause students the most trouble. So the deeper you want to go into understanding how things work, the more technical things get. Now you might recognize the word differentiation from calculus. In fact, that's all we need to use to train a neural network. In particular, we use an algorithm known as backpropagation 
to train neural networks and all it involves is just some ordinary differential calculus. Nothing any first year undergraduate hasn't seen before. Of course, I'm making it sound easier than it actually is, and many students struggle with this. It's not hard because any of the concepts are particularly hard. It's hard because consistently and correctly applying the rules of calculus is hard when you have complicated equations, as you do when you're working with neural networks. Now you might be wondering, if I have a neural network which is complicated, then what about a single neuron? If I want to understand networks of neurons, then surely it might be advisable to study the neuron itself. And that's exactly what we do. In statistics, the model of the neuron is called logistic regression. It's a simple classifier, but at the same time, it teaches us so many of the important concepts that we'll be using later when we study neural networks. In particular, the concept of gradient descent, the concept of having weights and updating them iteratively, the concept of an error function, the concept of regularization, and so forth. By the way, if you notice, the word gradient that appears in the term gradient descent is really just another name for a derivative, which we talked about earlier in the context of training a neural network. So if you want to know about backpropagation, it is extremely useful to know about logistic regression first. But even before you can learn about logistic regression, it is always good to start with the most basic machine learning model, linear regression. What's interesting is that both logistic regression and linear regression use the same underlying model, a line. The difference is, logistic regression is a classification algorithm, whereas linear regression is for regression. In simpler terms, linear classification tries to draw a line between the red dots and the blue dots. Linear regression tries to find the line of best fit. I think most of us have plotted lines of best fit in grade school, so it's something we should all understand. The difference between grade school and real linear regression is that now, instead of trying to draw the line by hand, we're taking a more systematic approach. This approach also allows us to work in much higher dimensions, where we can't even see what the data really looks like. Finally, the last important point to realize is that machine learning and deep learning isn't just math and theory, it's programming too. The equations we derive are meant to be used on data, which means you need to be able to implement them in code. This involves mastering tools such as NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas. It's important to remember that NumPy and SciPy are numerical computing libraries, so essentially what they do is mathematical operations. Of course, in order to understand and appreciate those mathematical operations, you have to know the math in the first place. The three main subjects you want to be familiar with are calculus, linear algebra, and probability. And this is the point where I think anyone who wants to learn machine learning seriously should consider these the fundamental building blocks. So let's summarize this path in chronological order. First, learn the tools that are needed to implement these algorithms. That's NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas. These tools help us implement concepts from calculus, linear algebra, and probability. Then, learn about the simplest machine learning model possible, linear regression. Then, learn about logistic regression, which extends the linear model to do classification. You'll also learn about important machine learning concepts, such as gradient descent. Next, learn how to combine neurons together in order to make neural networks. Remember, logistic regression is a neuron. Then, learn how to build neural networks using modern deep learning libraries such as Theano, TensorFlow, or PyTorch. Normally, deep learning practitioners just focus on one library. Once you know how to build a basic neural network, learn about convolution and how to combine convolution and neural networks to make convolutional neural networks. Even though these models are more complex, they are still doing the same basic tasks, classification and regression. Finally, learn how to combine the building blocks of convolutional neural networks in interesting ways to build more complex systems, such as object detection networks, style transfer networks, 
GANs, and facial recognition networks.